Welcome to Pellissippi State Community College. I'm Dr. Anthony Wise, the President. Thank you for trusting Pellissippi State with your college education. Your safety is a high priority for us here at Pellissippi State, and we are very fortunate to have a safe campus environment, and certainly we want to keep it that way. Part of maintaining a safe campus environment is promoting awareness among students of how to keep themselves and others safe. Please take a few moments to meet key members of the college community who are here to promote your safety. Our department motto is to protect and serve the campus community and most of what we do is service related. We don't have a whole lot of crime on our campuses, but if you'd like to see the actual crime statistics, you can go to our campus police website and click on Daily Crime Report. There you'll find crime statistics for the past 60 days. You can click on Annual Security Report to find crime statistics by campus for the past five years. You'll also find safety and security information contained in the annual security report. Like most colleges across the country, larceny is the crime that's reported most on our campuses. And larceny is generally stolen property that's left unattended. So please keep that in mind and don't leave your property unattended on campus. Our students, faculty, and staff are our greatest resource for keeping everyone safe on our campuses. Please, if you see something that's just not right, call the campus police office at 694-6646 from any campus. I also recommend that you put our campus police phone number in your cell phone so you're prepared in case of an emergency. Remember, if you see something, please say something. Give us a call. At Mississippi State, we believe that campus safety is everyone's responsibility. A few years ago, we adopted a slogan that's similar to um, other colleges and cities throughout the country, see something, say something. So if uh, you see something that occurs on campus, please make sure that you're uh, doing your part to be an active participant in our campus safety procedures. In order to be an active bystander, you'll have to fight against the bystander effect, which is a natural social phenomenon that occurs when people are in groups uh, where people diffuse responsibility for intervention uh, because they believe that someone else is going to step in. Uh, sometimes you have to be the person to step in and accept that responsibility for yourself and we encourage you to do so while you're at Pellissippi State if it's safe to do so. Bystander intervention methods fall into four different categories. We have uh, first, direct, where you directly intervene into a situation. You uh, go up to someone, you say something, you put yourself uh, in, in between two people that might be involved in an altercation that would be a direct intervention. Uh, two, uh, next we have uh, delegate. A delegation might be where you have a couple of your friends, uh, you see a situation that's not uh, going so well, you group together to go confront um, the situation. Delegation might also be contacting the police or someone else that's in authority uh, to respond to the situation and intervene. Third, we have uh, to distract. And distract is just that. Uh, to cause a scene to pull attention away from uh, whatever's going on over here that uh, might be harmful, put the uh, attention somewhere else so that someone could have the opportunity to intervene and provide some assistance. Uh, and fourth is delay. In a delayed intervention method, uh, you might witness something, you might see something, um, and then after the fact, follow up with the individuals that were impacted, offer any assistance, let them know that you're there for them. Regardless of which manner you choose to intervene, uh, please make sure that you're uh, reporting that information back to us at Pellissippi State. Uh, we want to make sure that we are able to assist uh, students that have uh, been impacted by negative behavior. The mission of our department is to provide a safe and secure environment for our faculty, staff, and students. And we accomplish that by being proactive. You'll notice our officers walking around the campus 24-7 here at the Hardin Valley campus and at our Strawberry Plains campus. We we'll also see our officers during normal class hours at the other off-site campuses. Please feel free to talk to us. We want to get to know you. Our job is to be here for you, and what we're looking to do is provide that environment so you feel safe and secure here on campus. Some of the services we provide are lost and found. If you find you're missing an item, please check with us. We probably have it. Uh, we'll send you an email if we can identify you, so we encourage you to mark your items with some way that we can find you and send you an email. Also, we provide services in our parking lot with lockouts and also with jump starts. If you lock your keys in the car, we'll be glad to assist you. We can come out to you and let you in. Also, if you need a jump start, we can come out with a jump box and get you started. You can also text us from your mobile device with our text tip. Dial 67283 and proceed your message with PSCC tips. Then we'll be able to send somebody to you to answer your concerns. As I said before, a 
safe campus is a cooperative effort. I encourage you to get to know our officers. If you see us walking around campus, which you will, I encourage you to get to know us. We want to get to know you, and we look forward to seeing you at graduation. Sometimes our students experience issues off campus that affect their ability to be successful on campus. And many of these issues are addressed by the Campus Save Act. Because of the Campus Save Act, Pellissippi State is promoting the awareness of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. We are also providing our students with tips on how to prevent these things from happening. We are fortunate to have resources in our community at the Family Justice Center to help us meet these goals. And the Family Justice Center is one place people can call or come to and find all kinds of services for domestic violence. Here at the Family Justice Center, uh, people can call in and can talk to someone over the phone or they can actually stop in and talk with an advocate uh, about safety planning. They can talk to law enforcement about their legal options of warrants or taking out orders of protection. We have Legal Aid of East Tennessee here who can provide free lawyers. We have Department of Children's Services here on staff. Domestic violence is actually more than just a fight between a husband and wife. It's forms of abuse that occur between people who are related by blood or marriage, people who are dating, or simply people living together, such as roommates. Well, the early forms usually is emotional abuse, and that could be criticizing, tearing down somebody's self-esteem. From there, it can go to the psychological. It's the mind games where someone's being threatened or simply being publicly humiliated. Then we have sexual abuse that's being forced to have sex when you don't want to. Financial is where an abuser will actually buy things for the victim to try to make them feel obligated. And lastly, it's physical. And physical can start out very simple with breaking objects, punching holes in sheetrock, to finally it's a, grab, a simple grab on the wrist, and it escalates to a push, a shove, and finally a hit. There are three basic warning signs of an abusive relationship. Extreme jealousy, controlling behavior, and isolation. Of the three types of the basic warning signs of an abusive relationship, we first have extreme jealousy. And that's where someone is always watching to see who the person's talking to. Controlling behavior, they're constantly having someone call them as soon as they get into class or as soon as they get out of class or right before they go to work, get off from work, they're constantly tracking them. And lastly, it's isolation, where the abuser is cutting the victim off from help. Uh, it could be counselors at school, as people can actually give them resources. A scenario that could happen at Pellissippi State is one of the students is in class and one of their classmates comes in who might be troubled and, and so the student begins to ask them, well, what's going on? And then they discover that they're being hurt or that they're being mentally beaten down by somebody. And so that's an, a way to share with them that they can go to the Family Justice Center or there's people at Pellissippi State, the counselors are trained, on where to go for resources. Sexual assault is non-consensual sexual contact when force or coercion is involved in accomplishing the act. Um, and force means that they might be using a weapon such as a knife or a gun. Um, coercion means that they're harassing the person or intimidating them in some way to try to get them to do what they want. Um, a rape is actually um, non-consensual sexual contact where penetration, no matter how slight, is involved. Basically, the definition of consent is to give permission, um, to agree to something, to say this is okay, to give approval. Um, when there is sexual assault involved and there's, non, there's not consent, that's a problem. Uh, people who are not able to give consent by the law are people who are mentally or physically incapacitated uh, due to alcohol, drugs, maybe they're passed out, maybe they're mentally not able to understand um, what, sex, what sex is. Um, and so, it's really important that people know when they're drinking or using drugs or anything like that, that that person is not, if the other person is not real aware, um, that they're not giving their consent. So going home with someone is not consent. Um, dressing in a little short dress is not consent. None of these things say yes. Um, it really have to have very clear communication around this and have discussions about what you're okay doing and what you're not okay doing. Um, if you don't hear a clear yes, do not proceed. You want to know it's not your fault and seek counseling and, and attention, physical attention at the doctor. First and foremost, finding a safe place, um, knowing that at that point um, your body is like a crime scene. So you want to, as quickly as possible, go to a hospital or to a rape crisis center. Um, within 70, 72 hours, it's super important to get counseling. Um, 
even just calling if they're not ready to go right away. Victims will have, um, most likely have some aftermath, emotional sort of feelings afterwards where they're going to have depression, nightmares, PTSD sort of things, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, trouble sleeping, um, maybe just see the person on campus maybe and feel scared. So it's really important that they get um, counseling and assistance for themselves and know it's not their fault. If you have a friend come to you and say that they think that's happened to them or it has happened to them, it's really, really important that they get help. Um, so helping that person feel safe, sitting with them, letting them talk, believing them is really, really important. Well, stalking is really, um, it's like when someone's just crossing someone's boundaries. They're just like pursuing them in a, in a relentless way. Um, that can happen between people who don't even know each other. You know, you have someone who's obsessed with someone, they met at a party and now they're following them everywhere and texting them or calling them or finding them on social media or photographing them. Um, or, and it's making the victim feel really, really uncomfortable. Um, it can also happen in, in dating relationships or um, they can, somebody who's broken up and one person doesn't want to let it go and they just keep um, texting them or calling them or pursuing them and showing up where they, where they are and um, just that person just feels like no place is safe um, and it's very intimidating. So if that is happening, um, they really need to be sure to um, talk to someone on campus, an officer, a counselor, and they do have things in place at Palisade State to help with that. Pillsbury State is a safe community and we encourage you to be a, an active participant in our campus safety efforts. No matter which one of our campuses you call your educational home, we have services and resources available to you. If you notice behaviors that are of concern or if you've been impacted by someone else's behavior, please let us know. We're here for you and we want you to be successful.